Hello everyone, my name is Ger. I'm happy to be a speaker in PyCon App Pack 2022 this year. My talk is Type Erasure in Python. Hope you can enjoy it. If this is not your first Python conference, Type Hint may be something you've heard before. It is a hot topic for Python these years. And even in 2022, it's still a hot topic. There are tons of syntax and performance improvement in newer Python versions. But today, my focus is totally a different topic, a counter thing called type erasure. One motivation behind this is because type erasure is a popular thing in other programming language. However, it's rarely discussed in Python community. The objective here is obviously to understand what is type erasure. I have examples in both C++ and Python. And because most of the code are written in C++, if you don't have C++ background, the talk content could be slightly tough for you, but hope you can still enjoy the thing under the hood. And CPython extension module development experience is optional, but good to have. And even without such knowledge, you can still enjoy my talk. My agenda contains following things. What is type erasure? Why do you need type erasure? That's the initial questions. And then I provide an example in C++ and Python. Let's talk about what is type erasure now. In Wikipedia, the definition is in following sentences. Type erasure is the low time process by which explicit type annotations are removed from a program before it is executed at runtime. Well, it's very hard to understand, I know. I have the C++ example later can show you. And the other thing is if you search type erasure in YouTube, Top videos are in C++, Swift, and Java. Yeah, there's nobody talks this in Python at this point. Why do you need type erasure in general? If you are a pure Python developer, the fact is you don't need to care about this. But if you are a C Python extension module developer, or if you want to run some C code in Python, well, they're kind of incredible. Then your C library can be written with a pattern like this needs. And your module can hide the type complexity either behind C or Python. So that's the reason why you need type erasure. Okay, so in this section, let's talk about type erasure in C++. This section totally contains two code examples. Hope it helps you understand the statement in Wikipedia we talked earlier. The first example is came from the top YouTube video if you search with keyword type erasure in C++. You can find a full code example in my GitHub. However, in here, I'm not going to dive too deep into the detail. Instead, I just want to let you understand a bit of the concept type erasure. In this example, you can see we have two structs. One is Alice, the other is Barb. Both contain functions say. And in the main function, we don't call the type Alice or the type Bob directly. We actually declare another type called Alice or Bob. And this new type Alice or Bob can actually be Alice or Bob during runtime. And next example is the standard library any. Standard library any here, it's a very iconic type erasure usages. You can see we declare the variable called a, it's any type. And this a can actually be anything here. So we assign one to a now, then you can see we can use any cast to cast uh, this a to integer. And we can also change the content of a into something like 3.14. And then we can cast it to double and so on, right? The Boolean is the following example. That is the idea of type erasure in C++. Before talking about type erasure in Python, I added a question mark in the end. 
That's because after you learn C++ type erasure, you may ask a question. Wait, why does Python need type erasure? Right, there are two facts. First, in Python level, the type of an object is decided in runtime. And in C level here, everything is py object pointer under Python interpreter. The case one is, imagine you are a Python developer write a Python program. And your Python program now can pass the variable as a parameter to Python or to things actually written in C. That's called C extension, right? If you, your Python try to pass a variable to another Python, that variable, again, is under Python interpreter, is pi object pointer. If your Python program try to pass the pi object pointer to C, C doesn't understand it. The typical way C does is to type it. The type here, this action, one of the commonly used uh, C API called pi arc underscore parse tuple. Let's take a look at the below example. You can see we have an interface called CAPI underscore add. Python basically puts the arguments from Python. The way C loads it is to initialize some primitive type in C. This type long C understands. Put it as a reference into pyarg underscore pass tuple function to make sure the value is loaded from arguments as a pi object pointer to long. And the case two, Imagine you are a C developer now, write a C Python extension module. Your C code needs to make something Python understand. And the C's type, Python doesn't understand. Python interpreter needs to use the thing called pi object pointer. To do so, you need to convert the C type back to pi object pointer. The conversion is yet again done by C API. C API supports a lot of primitive type. And in this case, we just got a long result in C. And this long result, we can add it as a long again in C, but we cannot return the result directly to Python. Instead, we call a function called pi long from long. And this from long is from C's long to pi's long. And pi's long in Python is integer. Then in Python, you can just call this interface like this. C A P I underscore add. This is the function exposed here. And I put one and two as an argument. This is corresponding to the pi object point here. And then we get the result is one plus two from C equals to three in Python. That is how type system works if you try to pass the variable between C to Python or Python to C. Let's talk about type erasure in Python. Here is the simple diagram to explain it. You may have recognized this diagram already appear in the previous slide. However, the difference is I change the pi object pointer to a question mark here. And the reason behind that change is pi object pointer here is meaningless now for Python. When Python needs to use it, it has to pass to C. The C type here is totally erased in Python. Python doesn't need to know it. Python doesn't use it. The idea of type erasure in Python, essentially Python doesn't care about the type of object passed from C. When Python needs to use it, Python passes it back to C. The workflow is following. The C function returns a pi capsule to Python. This pi capsule is type erased and unused in Python. And Python function passes the capsule back to probably another C functions to make C function use it. If we put it in a kind of human understandable picture, it'll be like this. Firstly, we have a lot of open capsules with C types inside. And C understand it, of course. When we try to pass those C types to Python, we need to capsule it to something. And Python holds the capsule without understanding what's inside. And when Python want to use it, it needs to pass the capsule back to C and open the capsules in C to understand the type and use in C again. 
That's the overall concept of type B ratio. In this section, I will talk about a real-world example called StreamMature. You can find the entire source code in my GitHub repository. If we want to develop a StreamMature module in C++ with the following methods, first one is getMature, second one is Mature, third one match. You can see the getMature function has the postfix xxx. That means we can define different type of mature in C++ with different algorithms under the hood. Second one is isMature. isMature's parameter is mature because we want to verify if the given mature is a mature. This should be done all in C rather than Python because Python doesn't understand the object it holds. Finally, match function. The special part here is it has three parameters. The first one and second one is simple. It's just a two string we want to compare. And third parameters used here is to call the algorithm under the matcher to match the two string we provide. So this way, Python doesn't need to understand the type of the matcher. Python doesn't use it at all, in fact. Everything Python uses here, it's simple. Just hold it and the give C. C will tell Python, it's Python understandable thing. At least for the major itself, Python doesn't understand anything. We can take a look in the source code level of each step. The first one in workflow is the major in C. The major in C essentially is a struct. And the struct defines two virtual methods. One is match, the other one is destructor. Besides that, we also have predefined measure. So predefined measure here, we have exactly measure and partially measure. Here is an implementation for two measures. Exactly measure here is pretty simple. The match function, we override it, and it's just to compare if the given first string is equal to the second string. The partially measure here is slightly different, but it's also nothing special. We override the match virtual function, and then we compare either A contains B or B contains A. With this, we can see the measure function has different algorithms under the hood. How to use it? To use it, when C pass the measure to Python, this measure need to be capsuled. So need to be a capsule in Python. We need a helper function. The helper function called create a measure capsule. And why we call it create a measure capsule is because even if it's a capsule, we need to put some identifier, unique identifier to understand, oh, this capsule is measure. And we define the identifier measure name and measure context. This helper function then can put a whatever void pointer into this and uh, mark it. This void pointer is certain major. So if you give whatever void pointer to it, at least uh, it can check the major name and the major context to understand this capsule is, is major or not. The next thing is get major, right? In in Python, we need to call get major xxx to get the measure from C. And the measure is actually a pi capsule. So to do this, simply just we call the we predefined measure and cast it into void pointer. That means it, this already means nothing for Python. And then we use the helper function we just defined, put that void pointer inside and return it. Okay, Python now get the pi object pointer. It's a pi capsule, means nothing for Python. When Python holds the capsule, the way Python uses it is not directly use it, instead is to pass it to C's functions. Its measure interface here, you put the measure inside, and it will return boolean. It's either this is a measure or not. And the way we check is simple, because when C defines the capsule, it provides the measure name and measure context in it. So in here, when we try to validate it, we just check the same thing again. Check the matrix name, check the matrix context, then assure this capsule in Python is a matrix or not. A match function here in Python, again, the interface is two stream from Python plus one matrix object. So here we can recall the parse arg parse tuple thing I mentioned earlier. The C level tries to load the A and B as a string, 
into char pointer. The third one is the pi measure. This pi measure is a pi object pointer. Actually, after C get this pi object pointer, you can see it's just a void pointer. It's not understandable by C either. So C needs to get the pointer from it and then cast it back to the corresponding major object. And the major object here provides the match function, right? So match function, we can call it and put two strings here and return either true or false. And of course, this true and false needs to be pi object pointer. So Python understand this true and false. All right, with this, we can write a unit test in Python. And Python unit test here is pretty simple. Just uh, call get major exactly and get major partially to call the predefined major in C++. And we hold it, right? And we can call it, check if it's a major in Python. And surely we need to call the is major function defined C and pass the major into the C function. And we can also call the match function with the corresponding different measures and get the results here. You can see the exact match and the partially match. The last section, I want to provide a bit more detail in the reference count matters. Reference count matters is really important, especially for people really dive deep into the implementation level, because it's very important to assure your program doesn't leak any memory. The unit test for the previous example we can also check the reference count of a measure. In this case, you can see we check the reference count before we use the measure and after C function finishes using the measure. Before and after reference count should be the same. That's because we don't really expect any strange thing happen in C level to change the reference count. The reference count matters happens firstly in the scenario I talk. So you try to do the type erasure thing in, in Python. In this case, right, as previously objective I mentioned, you are a C Python extension module developer. You have responsibility to assure your C function doesn't leak anything out of the thing you return to Python. There are actually another case. It's on the other hand, your Python holds some pi object pointer and uh, your C doesn't care about this pi object pointer. And this is so-called type erasure in C. Well, it's actually not. It's not type erasure. However, we can kind of say analytic to Python's one. This is a kind of type erasure in C. I also have a full example in my GitHub repository, but this is slightly out of the scope of today's talk. So I'm not going to go through the detail inside. Generally speaking, this case can be either you are a Python developer or you are a C Python extension module developer. For the Python developer's case, you can just imagine actually the module you use is already handle those pi object pointers memory safety for you. So you never need to care about the reference count behind those pi object pointer. However, if you here are the C Python extension module developers, that will be different. The solution here consider the known solution first. So things like PyBind 11's object would be something very helpful because it handles the reference count for you. And you can also consider implement your own, like PyBind 11, right? So you just implement PyObject wrapper on it, and the PyObject wrapper is supposed to handle those reference count issues. And furthermore, you can also consider the Python building containers to handle that for you. So like PyDict, PyList, you can put the PyObject pointer into it to let it handle the reference count for you. With all those solutions, the program should be safe without any memory leak. Anyway, if you are interested to any of the things I mentioned today in the source code level detail, please check out my GitHub repository, Type Erasure Learning. You can learn all those code examples there. Thank you.